Felix and Winston here, and we've got the latest for you, not just on the breakthrough AI deal of Microsoft, what's happening in sneakers, inflation collapsing, but how you can actually make money out of it. I'll walk you through some real trades and much, much more. It all is uh, the hard work of this golden retriever. You've done a lot today, haven't you, Winston? So there we are. Let's get cracking, shall we? Do you want to go and snack? I think you probably do. I'm going to let this guy out and we'll, we'll get cracking. I'll be right back. Right, we're back. Dressed half in green and half in red today, which sort of reflects the mood of the market right now. Good morning to you. And as usual, none of this financial advice, just Winston's wisdom. Smash the you know what and let's get cracking. I've also got two goodies for you in terms of important information to understand. And the first is I made a document for you. Becoming a real writer here. It's just called... Um, Basically, I want to go through this in a second here. Yield curve. The yield curve, if it's doing what it's doing right now, normally says we should be in a recession, but we're not. So I want to explain why that's happening and how you can actually make money out of it, like what sectors are going to benefit from this. So you can download this completely free of charge at felixfriends.org slash money, because this is what this is all about, money. And um, that's why you invest, isn't it? Unless you have some religious further for, you know, Alex Carp or something. But <laughs> most of us, it's money. So get your pause on that, Felix Friends and slash money. And uh, it's, it's as usual, free, of course. So let me then jump into a little bit, and I can see the little symbols here, you guys popping into it, which is cool. So go for that. We're going to look a little bit at economics, what's happening here in terms of headlines. We want to look at Apple. We want to look at Microsoft. We want to look at this little thing here called Pi. And I asked Pi, which is the thing that Microsoft just acquired. Um, I asked it, um, how do I explain to my golden retriever that he needs to go on a diet? <laughs> and it says, this is the LLM, the chat GPT sort of type thing that Microsoft just acquired in a really sneaky way. And apparently it has emotional intelligence. So it says, that's a tricky one, Felix. Dogs don't understand human language. I disagree. Or concepts like dieting. Okay, I agree on that one. Instead, try these strategies. So remember, consistency is key. Um, my um, lovely housekeeper's been very generous with their food portions. They thought they were doing a nice thing. They did not. Um, the poor chap's put on about five pounds, which he now has to work off. So there we are. Before we get properly cracking, we are also running a live trading training this coming Tuesday. If you want to see how I made last year, 105% ROCE, 126% the year before. And so far this year, we're up at $5,400 on an approximately $30,000 portfolio. Then come and join me on Tuesday felixfriends.org slash webinar. The link's down below. So it's, a, it's simply go to felixfriends.org slash webinar. And I'll also be, be actually be live trading for you guys in the community already today. You might have seen the notification already. If not, you have seen it now here. Webinar. It's about 90 minutes and I give you my entire protocol. The whole system. It's only three steps. It's pretty, pretty easy to do the steps. You need to learn a bit for sure, but I'll give it to you so you can start learning. So we've been doing quite nicely, as you can see. Now, let me run you through a little bit what's actually going on in the world, why are stocks doing what they're doing. This is meant to be the best week so far this year, although today is looking a little bit touch and go, but we'll get on to that. Now, globally, inflation has come down tremendously. We're down to 2.9% in the G7, the largest seven economies in the world, which is sort of slightly above the long-term average, but not a great deal. So we're expecting rate cuts from the Fed and from the ECB and the Swissies and everybody else. Japan going the wrong opposite direction, obviously, but that's a that's an outlier. And that should be a good thing for stocks, right? You would think. And it is it, to, to a large extent. But if you look at this document that I'm sharing with you, we have a yield curve inversion and, and read what that means to really understand it, the longest ever. And normally what happens is when you get a yield curve inversion, which is where we are below this zero line here, normally what happens is you get a gray zone afterwards. And the gray zone is 
is a recession. So why the heck did we not get a recession so far when we're down here? I mean, we're really at like 1980s levels. Well, because the government is spending us out of a recession. It's very simple. It's debt. It's debt. It's all debt. That's really what this is about here. U.S. government debt is going up faster than ever before. Um, that's preventing this recession from happening. So what's going to happen? Is it going to come anyway? And if it does, is it going to be good? Is it going to be bad? The Fed will cut more. Well, what's going to happen here? Seriously, read it. That's what I'd say to you because then you really understand it. Okay, so check it out. FedExRents.org slash money as they say in certain parts of the United Kingdom. That's the webinar sign up for if you haven't been over there already. And this is pre-market, which actually is looking a little bit better than it was 20 minutes ago when I first looked at it. Apple is in the green despite lawsuits, which we'll look at. Google is up. Some more meta in the green. Tesla down three percentage points. Is that the end of Tesla? No, it's not. We are actually bullish Tesla, and I'll walk you through that as well. Fat drugs are doing well, which is not surprising. And um, Accenture is doing well. Is that Accenture? Yeah, possibly because PwC is going to get hit with some serious fines in China, you would have thought, right? Evergrande? Yeah. Uh, you don't want to be the auditor that signed that off. Uh, ooh, it's a minor difference in revenue. 78 billion? Right, brilliant. Trainers, and sorry, um, very tight. Leggings. Do you know that Lululemon is one of the largest causes of microplastics? Yeah, there's an environmentalist in here too. You'd be surprised, right? Seriously, in 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 everything everything that you buy that is um that sort of synthetic, stretchy, crappy material, when you wash it, microfibers come out of it. They go in the water and they end up in the sea and they end up in fish. And if you eat fish, they end up in you and and so on. It's glorious. Um, it's not. But yeah, anyway, Lululemons are um, slowing a little bit. It's a competition from companies like Alu Yoga and people like that. They uh, just made kind of cooler stuff, really. So what's Lululemon going to do? They've got the ultimate secret to it. More colors. <laughs> so you're going to see more people in those really weirdly colorful leggings in your next yoga class, if that's what you get up to. Uh, Nike, similar issue. They have too much inventory still, although inventories come down, I think, about 13%, which is more than expected. But they're basically trying to get through a glut of trainers and then catch up to, with the likes of... Uh, Hawker and, 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 you know, on, on and, and those kind of slightly newer, trendier brands. So and Nike are a real underperformer there. But yeah, they got some struggles ahead there, although I, I still I wouldn't count Nike out. But yeah, they have obviously not done super, super well. Apple, the big one, lost $113 billion because they're basically being probed in two openings, which isn't pleasant, by the Americans and the Europeans. And in Europe, you can now get fined up to 20%, uh, I think, of global revenue or something like that. There's a 10% of global revenue, like serious fines in theory, uh, after they just got fined. And similarly in the US. And what's it all about? It's basically restricting access to stuff. So they've got the, the iMessenger, right? It's not possible to build an app that cr connects to the messenger and also say to WhatsApp in like some sort of grouping app. Apple made that impossible. And there, there are lots of little things like that that they've done that basically have restricted or sort of build more of a moat for themselves in a kind of Microsoft-esque fashion which is understandable from an Apple point of view, but regulators are saying very, very naughty. And, and therefore, potentially, yeah, they're going to spend years in lawsuits. The problem with that isn't the fine. The problem isn't whether they win or lose, and they might well win, but it's distracting senior management if they're going to testify, they're going to get coached by lawyers and discuss these things. That's actually the problem, that it slows innovation down. And I think Apple is already fairly slow on that front. So that's the real problem. Microsoft, on the other hand, does not have that issue. Microsoft is just like, it's like a, like a thief in the night. They, okay, there is a, there's an AI company called Inflection AI, and they 
have built an LLM, which is literally this one here called Pi. P-I dot A-I. I don't know how you get a two letter domain name, but I'm jealous. And it's apparently has got emotional intelligence. Uh, so what can you say? What's my love language? Ace your next interview. Get started with journaling. Seven things you didn't know about the ocean. Anyway, it does that sort of thing. So it's a little bit more like fluffy, soft. Well, what about the news today? I don't know. Did that? Did that. Okay, let's uh, let's see. Um, give me today's key stock market news. Most likely to move stocks. All right, see what happens. This is what they've just acquired. So what they've done is they didn't acquire it. They hired all the employees, <laughs> all the key employees, and then they chucked a bit of money at the company as a compensation, which possibly, it's not answering, is it? So far, so good. Not answering. Which, um, yeah, possibly is a way to get around regulators because if they try to acquire it, they'd probably get hit with antitrust lawsuits. But this way, they didn't acquire it. They just acquired the IP and the staff. Hang on, there's a cat stuck somewhere. Be right back. Here we go. Wouldn't want uh, want cats on the loose now, would we? Especially not this one. There we go. Right? Were you stuck? Were you stuck somewhere? Possibly. Yes. Why were you stuck? Because you snuck out when I came in. Mm -hmm. All right, so there we are. Uh, it's all very serious and, and, and it all works terribly well. See, apologies, an unexpected error has occurred. Microsoft has just taken over this business. That's what happens. That's what you get. That's quite funny. Um, uh, Jeffrey says, undervalued AI shares. Oh yeah, that's on the list. Um, possibly for next week. Possibly for next week. I appreciate you going for that. and. Ella Luda or Squeaks, uh, says Logan, you are very well about informed with the names of my cats. So slightly spooky. No, I do appreciate it. Uh, so Bloomberg says Apple loses 113 billion. Uh, there's an opinion piece. The US shouldn't force Apple to make wor a worse iPhone, which is clearly Apple paying Bloomberg. And then there's Reddit, which is up. How much is Reddit up by? 48% or something, and you're all going, Felix, you told me not to buy the IPO. We hate you now. That's why no one's tuning in today. Um, I'm still very happy about my decision. Yeah, they're up 48%. And now, of course, it's the time to YOLO in when it's up 48%. The problem with this, to me, is that, there was a headline yesterday, earlier today, the IPO, they didn't just raise money that they also had existing shareholders selling. And to me, that's just a huge freaking red flag. So you invest in this company, Reddit, like five years ago. Now the valuation is 10 times higher. And now you sell. And you are an institutional investor or a private equity fund or something. And, and you're basically saying, I know this business from the outset. I know everything about it. And I think this is the time to exit. But you lot, you idiots there in the masses, you should go and buy it. That's, that's basically the pitch. And people are going, brilliant, I get access to IPOs. I'm so lucky. What? Really? No, you're not. You're just the Muppet who pays private equity investors. My view. Anyway. Um, Logan, I, I know I tell you their names. Uh, there's an, uh, she's there. I've got two here, actually. I've got, I've got both Tallulah and Squeaks next to me. There's a third cat, which is fairly rare to see here on the channel. Um, Pepsi incentives. Gregory, what are you talking about? I mean, the Reddit options, Shane, be ready. Uh, you're looking to short it, are you? Typically, typically... Um, 24 hours later, it could be a little later. I don't know, it just depends. You basically need somebody to make that market. Um, could, could be later. Like there isn't usually a really hard rule on it. Even to get the stock chart up, uh, what is it, RDDT? No, it's up, okay, they're pretty quick. 
Uh, but yeah, sometimes that also takes a little bit of time. So there's no real hard hard rule on that one. A uh, PayPal chart looking pretty. Someone saying PayPal, indeed PayPal. That, that PayPal call is making some money, which is very nice. Sixty six dollars. Yeah. So next step, sixty eight. Uh, that's the resistance, and beyond sixty eight, we can go to seventy six, and then then we're making some money. Hey, now I wanted to walk you through two things. If you get, read our newsletter, it's called Trading Floor Whispers. It's on Substack. Um, you get actual trade ideas from us. Planet Fitness one, did you see that one? Did you see this? This chap here looks a little bit like Peter Thiel. <laughs> he was in the woman's um, changing room um, having a shower because he apparently identifies as somebody who should be in a woman's locker room which is understandable. Many a man has just felt the urge to walk into a woman's locker room in a gym, but generally they don't because they get arrested. But there is a clause out. There is a, there's a, there's a loophole. You just say, I felt like I was a woman today. And then you get there. And then this lady who's was in that locker room, took a picture of him, posted it. And the gym did what? The gym terminated her membership. Of course, that's the logical, rational thing to do. We all want naked men in women's locker rooms, don't we? So um, we saw that and we thought, well, we know a certain part of the country isn't going to like that. So we put on a short trade and we wanted to set up, we wanted to get to 300%. We said you would risk $52. And we thought you could make 300% and you would have made that and then some if you um, were on board with us. And I'll show you where it's trading right now. Planet Fitness. Hang on. Planet Fitness now identifies as a bond or something. We're down. Yeah, we're, we're down. We're climbing up a little bit here, but you see, saw that nice rally down, right? So we took advantage of that with options, makes made a nice bit of money. We are also currently bullish on... That's nice, isn't it? That's real charming, isn't it? Real like eloquence there in the language, everything that we stand for. And um, yeah, we made some money on that too. That was the VIX trade. And this is Tesla. We're, we're bullish Tesla. Very simple. And... Yeah, it's down 3% today. Doesn't really matter. The The downward trend is what we bounced off. So if you see, let me show you this here. You see this purple line? Low, low, sort of lowish, low, bouncing off it again. And that's all we need. A bit of a bounce up. I think, I think we can... Um, quite easily get back into the 180s. That's what I would think. I think the whole EV industry is taking a little bit of a breather, demand slowing a little bit. That's what Tesla said, producing less in China and so on. And that's just kind of normal. They've got a bit of inventory. Interest rates are high. People buy less cars. Simple as that. It's not really surprising, right? But I, I yeah, I'm actually fairly bullish on them. Of course, it's not financial advice, just an opinion here of a chap who's wearing a green jacket and red shorts. So that tells you a lot. Um, I feel like a woman can go into any, an all women's, you, what, what, what are you talking about, Danzo? Or you want women to go into the men's rooms and you would, you'd be, you, you would applaud that. Yeah, I don't think it's a big problem that way around, right? Probably not a huge issue for us. Um, right. Uh, Floaten is saying, German finance YouTube channels, a lot of consideration about cannabis. Um, okay, find out. What is an ounce of cannabis costing if you buy it from one of the Canadian listed producers and then find out how much it costs to buy it from the dodgy looking bloke at the corner? And at least in the last year, and I have not done this research myself lately, um, this bloke at the corner had it cheaper than if you bought it from Aurora or one of those guys, which means the business does not work because people will not pay much more when the legal stuff is way cheaper. So the growing costs were too high and there's regulatory hurdles. There's always this, oh, it'll be legalized everywhere. Yeah. The question is, who can you find in the value chain of, of um, cannabis that actually has a moat? It's not the grower because at the end of the day, it's all the same stuff, right? It's like growing corn. It's just, it's corn. 
I know there are differences and all that, but essentially it's all the same. It's like growing tomatoes. There are a thousand different types of tomatoes, but really you're just selling tomatoes. No one's going into the store and go, uh, can I have the, uh, you know, XZ23 tomato? I'll only buy that one. Nobody does that. People go, I want a big tomato or a cherry tomato. It's the same thing with that. And, and then are there any really strong brands in it? Not really. Yeah, there are some like topical oils and supplement things and chew gums, and but it's all still pretty generic. So... I think if you think the space is going to explode, I would go for the shovels. I'd go for the payment processors. I would go for the delivery companies. I'd go for the storage. I'd go for the processors. I'd go for that space because I don't think of the end product or the grower's face. Anyone's really figured out how the frick this business is meant to work. So I, I think it's a basket case, but that's just my opinion. Our... All right, and I'm not saying I'm right. You're very welcome to, to disagree with me on any, any point. Uh, although yesterday somebody said, apparently I said something offensive about COVID. Okay. I think you have the right to be offended, but I think because you are offended, it doesn't mean I shouldn't be allowed to say it. I think, I think that's, the, that's the disconnect, right? You're completely permitted to disagree with me violently, throw things at the screen, although it's your screen, uh, but uh, I'll still say whatever the heck I want. <laughs> that's, that's, I think, the way it's meant to work, right? So, uh, Reem sings, I know more about cannabis than I would have expected. Um, yeah, I, I, I did a little bit of digging on that at one point, but... Um, Purely as an investment, of course. Uh, the jacket offends me. All right, that's it. It's going in the incinerator. <laughs> um, yes, green jackets offend me. It's a little warm, actually, so it slightly offends me too. I will be live trading for you guys inside the community in just a moment. And um, come and join me also live on Tuesday if you want to learn how we make money. Seriously. Three rules. I'll show you how simple it is, exactly how the structure works. Head over to felixfriends.org slash webinar. Felixfriends.org slash webinar. Link is down below. I'll type it in the chat here as well for those of you who don't know where below is. .org slash webinar. Grab yourself a free seat. It's completely free of charge and um, takes about 90 minutes. I walk you through the exact structure, our exit rules, how we automate everything, how we select trades, we do a trade together and everything else. And then, um, yeah, there, there it is. And of course, make sure you also get your hands on this because I wrote it and it's glorious and it's wonderful and it's, it's educational and it's insightful and it's entertaining. Actually, I don't think it's entertaining. I don't think, did we put any, any jokes on this to Luda? No, she says. So, but it, most people don't know what the heck an inverted yield curve is. I didn't used to know what that is, but you can understand it. And then you understand how that affects consumers and how debt ties into this, how the rate cuts are going to affect real estate and consumers, stocks, financial stocks, tech stocks, utilities, healthcare, manufacturing, and so on. And it might help you just make slightly better informed decisions, which is the whole point here. So link is down below. Um, What does inside the community mean, Julia? There is a very secret thing. You need a secret handshake. You need to show up on the third of the month. No, I'm kidding. We have, so we have co a coaching community where we uh, we teach and I'll show it to you. And um, we have a team of former investment bankers and myself in there. And they are all beautiful people who have, decades of experience actually trading for massive hedge funds. They've managed hedge funds and so on. And we uh, we run here live sessions. So I'm running, as you can see today, live trading with Winston. And um, tomorrow we're running sessions, a Q&A with two of our head coaches. Uh, Byung BK was a market maker. He managed the options portfolio for like a $3 billion hedge fund in LA. Um, there's only one in LA, if you know the space. Uh, he, uh, and then, you know, we're doing beginner sessions bigger tomorrow, um, more about interactive options, how, you know, how to use brokers. That's all that tomorrow and the weekend. And then Monday, you can see Tuesday, what's going on and so on. So we run group sessions, but you can also 
uh, book one-on-one -on -one calls with with uh, the guys so you can literally be on a call as often as you like with an investment banker who's done this for decades and, and you can actually learn how this stuff works. That's what we do. That's what we do from an educational point of view on the on the kind of back end that you don't really see all that often. Um, and, and it's, yeah, super fun, super exciting. And, and people are getting some amazing results from it, which I'm very, very happy to see. So if you want to check that out, come and join me on the on the webinar on Tuesday. That's what I would suggest. Um, FelixFriends.org slash webinar. Um, I'm hoping Tesla stock stays down until Monday. I'm getting more cash than Gabriel. <laughs> okay, happy to see that. Um, you like my British humor, but I'm not British. You know, the, the really funny thing about that is I'm German, which is the ultimate. <laughs> uh, you need some real humor for that if you're British. They're not... The Brits generally, when they when they hear and see Germans, there's just one one word that pops in their up in their mind, and it's um, it's Hitler. <laughs> that's that's what happens in their heads. I lived in the UK for a fair bit of my life, sort of formative years and all that. So I, yeah, I kind of absorbed and and very much treasure the British sense of humour. And I love that you can take the piss out of everything and everybody, and how everybody is sort of self depreciating, doesn't take themselves too seriously. And I very much hope that sticks around. So I think really what we should do is we should force school children to watch Monty Python because then they'd actually descend, you know, develop a sense of humor because uh, those guys are making fun of everything. And, and it was brilliant. It still is brilliant. So if you haven't seen that, watch that. Um, uh, Chris says, don't mention the war. Indeed, don't mention the war. Uh, from where in Germany? I was born in Hamburg and I lived there till I was 16. And then I went to the UK and then was there for probably the next... 10 years or so, and then went to Hong Kong, and I'm, now I'm, I'm here, and I'm sort of vagabond around the world a little bit. Um, Reams, don't mention you're German as well. Just, I just, just, just don't, don't tell people. That's probably the best thing to do. Faulty Talus is also brilliant. Absolutely. Is Winston named after Churchill? Absolutely, which is another irony, isn't it? Um, <laughs> um, And Lizzie, you're right. Germans are particularly serious people. Northern Germans are very serious people. We are not really meant to laugh. <laughs> now, there is actually, a, there is, in, 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 in a slight defense to them, in German, there is some very good German humor, but it doesn't translate. And most Germans are not very much fun, I'm afraid. So, uh, Logan says, uh, yeah, Python, Faulty, Blackadder, absolutely. Uh, that's sort of some of the breast stuff there coming out of the UK ever. Um, you used to be able to take a piss out of everything. Well, I still do. And, and occasionally people get offended and then they'll go and tune in somewhere else, which is, which is fine with me. Um, Fed news today, economic news. Nope, not a lot. Next week, we're getting not a lot till Thursday. GDP data and jobless claims Thursday. So it's a little bit of a quiet one, which is quite nice. Uh, probably because, uh, you know, when is Easter coming up? Soon, isn't it? So in, in honor of, of Jesus, I'm sure we're releasing less um, economic data. That's probably offensive now, isn't it? But then the Monty Python, you have, you remember that scene we were talking about yesterday? Guy carrying his cross up to get crucified and then the lovely priest comes along and let me help you with that. Let me, let me you know, lighten your burden or something. And then he takes it and then he just runs off. <laughs> just, it was rather funny. I thought it was rather funny. Uh, so, How's your temper as a German? I'm just, you know, very angry inside, obviously, and frustrated. And uh, my life runs on a spreadsheet and I like to shout at people, you know. <laughs> Wear your papers. Um, all the best humor is a bit offensive, not just a bit. I saw Jimmy Carr here a couple of weeks back. He's a British comedian. He's done some Netflix shows and stuff. And that is properly offensive. I mean, <laughs> really offensive. Very funny, but also very, very offensive. Um, can you tell us what happened with your recent losses, Logan? We've had recent losses. I wasn't aware we had these recent losses. I'll show you. I took a screenshot today. Here it is. This is today. We're up 4,000. No, that's not today. Where's the other one? Mm, I can I can log into it for you if you like. In case you think I'm I'm hiding something from you. Uh, there we go. I just updated that today. Uh, 5,400 dollars we're up so, so far to this year. Portfolio size is about 30k. 
so we're doing we're doing quite nicely. Um, yeah, we've had a couple of small losses, and that's normal. And um, we want to take those so that we make money, right? That's really ultimately what it's about, and and we've we've done that. So if you look at my March, yeah, we had we took a couple of trades off, that lost us some money, and then the next day we make money. Um, so that's just the way it works. And in February, we only had one. February was very calm for us. January was very much in a straight line. It's not always a straight line. So March has been, you know, we went down a little bit at one point, $400 down or something. Here we went down a little bit, $700 down, and now we're up again. So it's just normal. Uh, honestly, this smooths out the more, in a sense, the more trades you make, the smoother this gets. But it'll never be a straight line. Like everything is a zigzag, just like the stock market. So you don't expect it to be you know, we we don't aim to win every single trade. We aim to win about 75% of trades. Right now, that's 67%. But that's also because I've got some longer tra trades open that it doesn't count, right? It doesn't count trades that are still open. We only count trades that we've closed for a profit or a loss. So we've got we've got some nice nice um, buffer here right now with with trades set up. So yeah, I'm, I'm very happy what we're doing. So we'll be live trading in just a little bit here. Now, What app are you using to see that? Um, that's a website called Tradezilla, which is all right. I, I, to be honest with you, perfectly honest with you, I signed up to it to snoop on it because we're building out something similar into Options Watch. <laughs> so I was doing some research, but then I thought it's actually quite nice and visual. So let me just keep using it because I'm paying for it anyway. Um, Christian, how do you get access to Circle A and B in the community? Uh, join the coaching program, Christian. And I did see your email and you did see I'm doing some live trading today that you have access to, right? Um, so uh, thanks for that, Christian. But yeah, if you want to get access to coaching, you got to get access to coaching. Like it doesn't, you know. Uh, show us your dog for good luck. He's, 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 I think he's probably just gone out. This is usually the time where he does his evening, evening walk. Um, brilliant. All right. Quick look at the live market, shall we? If you're a faint hearted, avert your eyes now or, a, you know, just look this way. <laughs> um, and um, Thalula, you want to explain it for us? Google is up 1.1 percentage point, just keeps going. Tesla down three percentage points. I wouldn't read too much into that. Meta down half a percentage point. Well, Tesla is basically they're saying sales are slowing in China. Uh, Amazon down half a point. So the market is, you know, it's been the best week so far this year. It's kind of natural that people take a little bit of stuff off the off the fire at the end of the week, but it still looks pretty good. Nvidia is flat, Apple flat, despite the lawsuits and so on. So I'd say this looks pretty good. We're going to look for some trade opportunities in a little while here. Lululemon is down. Wow, 14%. Nike down 7%. That's interesting. Maybe we can do something with that. Uh, we'll have a look at that in a moment. Trump's back, still going nuts. And um, PayPal is going up very nicely. And that's making us some really good money, which is good to see. Um, Vincent, I'm taking your classes. How do you get to the community? Vincent, drop me an email, Vincent, if you don't know where you are you should of course have gotten you should have gotten and i'm sure they're probably in your spam folder somewhere emails with invitations to everything but occasionally a vicious spam filter will eat it uh, email me here felix at goatacademy.org and you're all obviously super welcome to do the same thing if you've got any questions about anything and uh, we'll get you whatever access you you should be having my friend um there we go. I thank you for tuning in. Make sure you get your pause on the uh, full document that explains like what stocks will benefit from rate cuts and everything else. Uh, links down below, felixfriends.org slash money. And also make sure you sign up and grab yourself a spot at our live trading training coming Tuesday evening. Uh, that's Eastern time. And you will learn exactly the three steps I use to make money and, and how we are up. How much are we up by? What did I just say? 5,000, what was it? close to the game. It was 5,000 something, wasn't it? How much was it? Five, let's just say it was 5,000, over approximately 30,000. So we're up about 16, 17, maybe 18% so far this year, which is I'm quite happy with. And um, PayPal, somebody shouts, just PayPal, PayPal. You think he's German? <laughs> uh, PayPal is looking good, looking very good at $66 here. And, and really the 
The next stop here is this will be a mini resistance, that line there. Can take away the other one, which is that high, that pre previous high here. And then there's not a lot really holding us back. Maybe a little bit here, 66, 67. You know, break through that. I could see us, cats arguing. I could see us back in the mid 70s, which would be glorious because our trade will be really printing some money. They will probably double our profits for the year so far. Um, right. Um, Germans only use PayPal? Probably. I don't know. Uh, Rui Kamitsono, I'm glad you're making um, progress. Love to see that. And I thank you for tuning in. I love you for doing that. See you on the next one. I'll probably tomorrow do a do a deep dive into what I think is going to happen next week. So if you are subscribed to the channel, you might just get the notification if you press the little, you know, fiddle with a little bell thingy there and have a glorious day. Enjoy it for you guys in the community. I'll see you over there in a few minutes.